Number 21, Integrated Concepts. Riders in an amusement park ride shaped like a Viking ship hung from a large pivot are rotated back and forth like a rigid pendulum. Sometime near the middle of the ride, the ship is momentarily motionless at the top of its circular arc. The ship then swings down under the influence of gravity. Letter A, assuming negligible friction, find the speed of the riders at the bottom of its arc. Given the system's center of mass travels in an arc having a radius of 14 meters, and the riders are uh, near the center mass. All right. Um, there's a few ways you can actually solve this problem. Um, I'm going to do it uh, using non-energy concepts because this problem comes before energy in the textbook. You can use energy concepts if you're already aware um, of those. Uh, so, you know, just like most problems, there's many ways to go about it. Um, in any case, we have this little, uh, here's a quick diagram. We have this, uh, you know, ship that's going to be located right at the bottom of this uh, red pendulum. The length of that uh, you know, radius here or pendulum, we can call it will be 14 meters. And what's going to happen is the ship, we're going to make an assumption, by the way, that the ship will rotate back and forth and it only goes up to about halfway in its circular arc, right? It comes down, comes up, stops momentarily, then comes back down, speeds through the bottom and then comes back up and stops momentarily right there, right? And swings back down like the sound effects. So, what we need to do is we have to, let's assume, not assume, but I mean it's telling us, let's assume that this is now at the top of its uh, path, okay, uh, at a circular path. And it said it's momentarily motionless there at the top. Now, I should bring this down a little bit because I want it to look exactly horizontal, all right? And the assumption now is that this will be the highest point that it will reach. It will reach halfway in its circular arc, okay? It told us that the velocity at that particular point here is going to be zero. So what I'm going to call that, I'm going to frame that as my initial point. When this thing then swings down right to there at the bottom, that's where it's going to be moving its fastest, right? So that's going to be the final mark. And I'm going to label that V sub F. Now that's what I want to find. I want to find the velocity down there. Okay. What else do we know about this? about this path. Well, it told us that the riders are under gravity. We know the acceleration due to gravity is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, right? So let me write that on over here. I'll just start writing it on the top. Acceleration is equal to negative 9.81 meters per second squared. We know the initial velocity here was zero meters per second. We know the final velocity is going to be some value. That's what we're trying to calculate. We don't really know the time it's going to take, right, to get to the bottom. So I'll just write T is equal to question mark. All right, but do we know something else? Do we know maybe the Y displacement? Do we know what that is? Now consider the initial point is here. The final point is then down here. And you also know that the radius or this length of that red line is 14 meters. So what do you think the displacement is in the Y direction from this point all the way down to that point? When the Y direction is simply gonna be literally equal to 14, right? And we want to put the sign there of negative 14 meters, all right? Because that's the difference in the height between those two points. All right. Um, now, armed with this information, how can we solve for then the final velocity? So we got to think back to our kinematics formulas, and we can come up with this one, right? Vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2 times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement in the x direction, or it could be the y direction. It really doesn't make a difference, Okay. So the final velocity squared is going to be equal to the initial velocity, which is zero plus, not equals, plus two times that acceleration of negative 9.81. All right. Or 9.80, whatever the, I think it's 9.80, actually. Let me just make that quick correction. And then just multiply it by your displacement there of negative 14. All the units are fine, so you don't have to plug them in, right? Vf squared is now going to be equal to, just multiply that all on the right-hand side in the calculator. So just take... 2, multiply it by negative 9.8, and then multiply that by negative 14. You get a value of about 274, 274.4, right? 274.4, square root both sides, bada bing, bada boom. And what is our answer? So second square root of that thing is going to be about 16.56, blah, blah, blah. So I guess 16.6 uh, meters per second, all right? Uh, not squared, just meters per second. All right, and that's going to be the velocity of the ship at the bottom. Cool? So that's letter A. Let's take a look now at uh, letter B. It says, what is the centripetal acceleration at the bottom of the arc? All right, so for letter B now, what do we know? Well, if we, go, if we look at our formulas over here on the right-hand side, 
right? We can look for some of the formulas that have centripetal acceleration in it. We know this one in particular, and I'll write it over here, that the centripetal acceleration is equal to the velocity, the tangential velocity, or the linear velocity at a particular point, divided then by the radius, okay, of the arc, of the motion. So what we found at this point right here is we found the velocity, 16.6 meters per second, aka that's the linear velocity, aka that's the tangential velocity, whatever you want to call it, all right? So we know the numerator um, variable, and we also know that the radius of curvature was 14, right? So this is just a simple kind of plug and chug, right? 16.6 squared divided by then the 14 meters. When you do this calculation, just try to use the exact answer from before, all right? So I'm going to use the 16.565, blah, 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 square it, and the divided by the 14, all right? And we're going to come up with a centripetal acceleration of about 19.6 meters per second squared. Now remember, in terms of the diagram, centripetal acceleration always points to the center of the rotation, okay? So if you're talking about this particular point here, remember acceleration here is going to be a vector. This value now, this acceleration is going to be pointing upwards towards the center of the rotation, okay? Keep that in mind. Now let's move on to letter C. Draw a free body diagram of the forces acting on the rider at the bottom of the arc. All right, so let's do this. I'll put letter C over here maybe in black. So we're looking at it at the bottom of the arc, right? So what you do, take a little, you know, make a little coordinate system here, that's fine. You know, the center of the coordinate system will now be the rider, okay? And the ship, you know, wh whatever it is, the ship with the rider, everything, right? Actually, excuse me, not everything. It says, draw a free body diagram of force acting on the rider. So just the rider, sorry, just the rider, okay? Um, so we know the rider is on Earth, right? We're assuming this is on Earth. How do I know that? Well, I don't know that, but that's the assumption. Um, unless you've seen a Viking ship on a different planet. So what we realize is that the rider is experiencing the force of gravity, right? So he or she has a particular weight, right? And it's going to be pulling down on him or her. Okay, what else is happening? Well, the ship then, through Newton's third law, right, is also then, the ship now is also pushing back up, right, on her or him, okay? So the ship is now also pushing back up. That would be called the normal force in this case, okay, the normal force, cool? Now, I'm not drawing this totally to scale. Maybe I'm going to, maybe I'll change the size of this a little bit. This would be a little more appropriate to scale. Why are these not balanced? Well, the reason why they're not balanced is because there is an acceleration, okay? There is an acceleration. What that means is whenever there is some type of centripetal acceleration, there will be some centripetal force, okay? Meaning there will be some net force pointing upwards in this problem. Look at the formula over here. Actually, that's part D, so let's wait on that, okay? This is your free body diagram for C. Let's move on to now D. So D now says, find the force exerted by the ride on a 60 kilogram rider. So as I was mentioning before, the centripetal force will equal the mass of the object in question, in this case it's the rider, multiplied by the centripetal acceleration. If this number is positive, if it's some value, uh, or even negative, it doesn't matter, if it's some value other than zero, and the object has some mass, then obviously we'll have some centripetal uh, force. Centripetal force, you can almost think of like a net force, okay? It's like a net force upward in this problem uh, because the centripetal acceleration is pointing upward, as I mentioned in part B, at the end of part B, okay? These have to be consistent. The centripetal force has to point in the same direction as the centripetal acceleration. They cannot point in opposite directions, okay? so. Now, what's if, if we think about the centripetal force as the quote-unquote net force, what would you now begin to do? You would take the normal force here, it's positive, so you'd write Fn, and then you would subtract the, out the weight because it's pointing downward. And this thing equals then, the difference between these two is the net force, aka the centripetal force. That will equal then the mass of the rider multiplied by the centripetal acceleration. If you want to find now the force exerted by the ride on the rider, that is known as the normal force. Okay, so this is the mass times the centripetal acceleration, then plus the weight of the rider. Okay, this is your formula. Now all you have to do is start plugging in the numbers. 
Okay, so the centripetal force here is going to be equal to the mass of the rider, which was 60 kilograms, times that centripetal acceleration of 19.6. Just use the exact value when you do the calculation, plus then the weight, okay, of the um, rider. So the weight of the rider, remember, it's going to be 60 kilograms. That's the mass times then the acceleration due to gravity. All right, times 9.8. So then just do a little plug and chug now. Just plug it on in. And what do we get here? So we get now 60 times. Oops, my calculator. Okay, turned off. So we get, um, uh, what do we get? 60. Actually, oh, that is the exact answer. 19.6 was exactly the answer. That's interesting. Um, okay, so we get 60. Uh, well, it's actually not that interesting given the numbers. Uh, 60 times, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. 60 times the 19.6. Great. And then add to that 60 times 9.8. And we get now about 1.76 times 10 to the 3 newtons. That's going to be the uh, normal force or the force that the ride is exerting on the rider. And then it says discuss whether the answer seems reasonable. Um, so you can, you know... Uh, what you can what you can do from here is you can kind of figure out now in terms of a uh, in terms of the rider's weight, right? You can kind of create a little ratio if you wanted or something. The rider's weight is going to be, as I mentioned over here, at sixty times nine point eight. You know, so what does that work out to be? Sixty times nine point eight. That works to be a, uh, be about five hundred and eighty eight newtons. You know, the total uh, ex uh, force that the ship is exerting on the rider looks to be about three times that amount because this is about one thousand you know, 760, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, yeah, it's reasonable. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Please help us out by liking, subscribing. Tell your friends too. We appreciate it. And we'll see you soon, all right? Take care.